welcome the dweller of the dark we are a channel honoring the yellowed and blackened bones of many prominent authors we will be digging up several obscure strange and forgotten authors who influence many of the great horror science fiction and fantasy writers today comment if you have an author you'd like to raise from the dead rip out the throat and eviscerate the like button below if a tale takes your soul raise the legions of hell by subscribing for more tales of the horrifying obscure strange and forgotten our collection continues to climb out of the tombs unknown horror masters the skull and bones collection is roaring away send us a pound of your writer's flesh to keep this beast fed if you want to bring your own horrors to life then find us on fiber to raise seven kinds of hell check out our new books on amazon our podcast and websites youtube rumble apple anchor fm spotify wordpress dweller of the dark kindle vela several new stories coming soon children of horror the skull and bones collection proudly presents a new skull to crush this is an aspiring horror master's new beast with fiery claws and reptilian teeth we let the blood fly tonight brandon j crookston's the lore of nocturnus raises its undead legions this is the world building lore for his epic nocturnus the necromancer dragon coming soon enjoy the lore of nocturnus by brandon j crookston the mortuus neil nisi bonum Dicendum est of the dead say nothing but good. Chalon of Sparta, 600 BC. I hear the roar of fire and the screams of a dying world. I smell the charring of burnt souls. I feel the icy chill of death. I feel the heated blast of hell. The world of terror is in flames and the dead no longer rest in the earth. The stench of death is on the heated night winds. The blistering inferno of Tartarus itself has rifled and ripped through this land of the undead. Hell has taken furnace form from a furnace pits glowering between darkest forest and blackened field. Gust of billowing winds are followed with tortured screams and the crunch and the rip and the tearing of something, possibly flapping wings, possibly clicking talons, or maybe it's claws ripping flesh. Between smoke and fog, pungent odors emanate from woodland and field. Ripe smells of coppery blood and rot carry on the mist, rising within these same night winds could what we have heard be the drip of water from encroaching fog we pray in despair ever skeptical that the sound is something so benign more water pours in the night we pray in futile angst all the while knowing with a gallows certainty its origin that gust of wind had a leather, bat-like flap to it. The large fire pits were too large for bandits and the screams too many for a barbarian's raid. The hairs stand on our neck 
and the chilled shiver runs down our spine, knowing that all too familiar sound of splatter falling from reptilian scales. With dire dread, we smell the reptilian musk as large splashes of gelatinous things dropped or lumbered in water. Unnerved confirmation causes us to gasp as we gain glimpses in the billowed flames from a luciferian blaze. A blazing yellowish-orange light which has illumined the darkness of this dead world. Turning, practically tripping, we bury ourselves under a fallen tree. In terrified cover, we know the creator of that world-scorching fire. The origins of that writhing blaze which erupted from razor teeth. If hell could take the form of a very fiendish animal, the necromancer dragon would be its most deadly. The dark god Nurgle has unleashed this harbinger of fiery doom. Nocturnus the necromancer dragon Nocturnus has risen by Nurgle's command and climbed from the void. Nocturnus has twisted and slithered from the evil abyss. Nocturnus, king of the undead by the dark god Nurgle. Savage, unrelenting, and unholy are this creature's abilities. Powerful, horrifying dark magic are wielded by Nocturnus. For Nurgle's terrifying creation has summoned up legions of the undead. Nocturnus has given rise to the rotted corpse and commands legions of an undead army at will. Hearken and hear our terrifying revelation. No creature of natural or preternatural creation alive, dead, or undead can stand against its onslaught. Nocturnus has used the dead to kill not only the flesh, but the soul. A dead child is raised to kill its living mother. A dead wife raised to kill their loving husband. A dead general raised and commanded to kill his legion. The legion of undead destroy the world. Nothing could stop this hellion beast. But what of the form of Nocturnus? How would we recognize this conjured devil from the other leprous beast haunting our skies? Nocturnus carried the telltale signs of Nurgle's black magic. The beast had the dark god's mark for necromancer dragons. Silvery gray skin tougher than any mortal steel, flapping bat-like wings black as an empty tomb, taloned claws sharpened to a knife's edge, ripped flesh tore sinew and crushed bone with murderous ease, bladed jagged teeth sharper than any known sword set beneath lifeless obsidian eyes as dark as the night sky itself. But Nocturnus's most vile weapon was its breath of the reaper. Purging fire was not the end of a victim with an enchanted necromancer dragon. The breath was a new unholy torture for it was discovered the very breath of Nocturnus, its breath of the Reaper, can not only incinerate his intended victims, but also resurrect them as members of his undead legions. Charnel, carrion breath that reanimated corpses to an unliving hell, an agonizing hell in servitude to Nocturnus. The only release from Nocturnus's charge came when the decayed corpse 
mercifully dissolved to serve no more. A horrific discovery to say the least. Unholy, unforgivable, abomination, Nocturnus, as decreed by Nurgle, was granted hell on earth. A detestable power to change the natural order, to bring back the dead as his own legion. Through its flame, aided by a relic given to him by Nurgle, the Spear of Lost Souls. Once resurrected, the legions of undead only obey their master to full corruption, even if it means having to succumb to a second immortal death. With a limitless decaying army and unlimited numbers of the undead, Nocturnus, the necromancer dragon, soon anchored himself as a very powerful champion to Nurgle. Horrifically, Nocturnus's army extended beyond the realms of undead, lesser minions of flesh eaters, cannibalistic tribes served the king of the undead. The largest army of these under his command are known as the Azteans. These outcasted tribes of Central and South Terra worshipped Nocturnus as an ancient god. Sacrifices were held in his honor. Loyalty to Nocturnus and to Nurgle have been tested often with sacrificial suicides. Leaders committing unforgivable mistakes ended or had ended their lives. As Tayans identified their servitude to Nocturnus with a mark, each member was given the marking of the master. A claw print of three pink scarred slashes in their chest identified the followers. The pink scar of three carried also an ancient tattoo of three hooked circles linked together at the hooked end. This was their dark master's own talon sliced into their flesh. Vile claw prints pledging beyond eternity their loyalty to Nocturnus, king of the undead. Orders of various sorcerers beckoned to serve Nocturnus in the dark rituals of black magic. Reanimation rituals were carried out in secrecy, often involving a summoning of other forms of the dead. All manner of cryptic creation would live once again as mystical fires blazed under the stars of Polaris, Aldebaran, and Cassiopeia. These demoniacal practitioners brought forth banshees, wraiths, phantasms, and the soulless ones who carried flesh but no heart to beat their congealed and rotted blood. However, these monstrosities were not perpetual. These blasphemies were not to be born or reborn at happenstance to the breath of the reaper. Thankfully, these evil creations had limits. Reanimation rituals could only be carried out once every few months to conserve the power of the spear of lost souls. Therefore, the balance between worlds, between dimensions, and between universes maintained itself. Even darkness's chaotic energy was finite and could be exhausted. Every 20 years, Nocturnus would return and expect human sacrifices. Every 20 years, an offering was bled in order to help maintain the spear of lost souls. Every 20 years, for the last millennium, dark energy from the spear of lost souls held control over the legions of the undead. Then, all of that changed. It was the year of the great convergence of Polaris with Exultana. 
the year when Terra shifted to the great white expanse, culminating towards great storms of snow and ice. The year when a sect of Azteans, known as the Dark Priest, failed to offer a sacrifice. The Dark Priest people had been ravaged by the demands of Nocturnus' sacrifices. The people were on the tide of extinction as a consequence to the tithe of 100 dead every year. To avoid cataclysmic annihilation of their race, the Dark Priest ignored their oath to Nocturnus at their own peril, punished to a severity that shadowed any mutilation before. Nocturnus entombed their entire village to his undead legions. The abominable beast used the breath of the Reaper. Nocturnus's soul-searing emerald flames converted every last villager into his legions of the undead. Unbridled and everlasting, Nocturnus, king of the undead, had towered his undead numbers expanding the vast following to further the reach of Nocturnus's kingdom of evil. Vast would be the non-believer's destruction, heavy always the burden to reveal the spear of lost souls. Now begins a time of darkness for all the kingdoms and city-states of the central and south Tarian regions. For more than a thousand years, Nocturnus's undead legions lay waste to the lands. For more than a thousand years, Nocturnus had reigned unholy fire, death, and undeath to the innocent, the infirmed, and the pure of heart. Then, a miracle occurred. In the thousandth year of Nocturnus's reign of terror, as Aldebaran went wane, a brave and powerful Terran king, Exuli, stepped forward. This brave ruler dared to challenge the evil afflicting our world. With his holy shamans and the arrival of a very brave and very powerful ancient paladin, Nucus. The latter, Nucus, was one of three legendary and ancient magic warriors who wielded the power of the Aurorian bells. Thunderous roar shook all things in heaven. Thunderous roars rumbled and shook through the deepest pits of hell. Nocturnus flamed the skies red as he ordered the charge of his undead legions. But during the battle, with his forces failing him and enraged Nocturnus, made a foolish and albeit fatal mistake. He charged into the battle himself. For 14 days, blood and death filled earth and heaven. For 14 nights, blood and death and undeath filled earth and hell. Great was the titanic clash between the forces of light and darkness. Dragon be damned. Evil was on the verge of triumph. Then the miracle occurred, right when it seemed all was lost. The weary paladin, Nucus, called forth his most legendary power, the power of the Aurorian Bells. In that instance, blistering, brilliant turquoise power channeled through Nucus's bronze shield and silver sword, blinding the horrid beast. With sword ready, to ram through the blinded beast's brain. Nucus had defeated Nocturnus. However, the cost was too high. Nucus, the warrior paladin, suffered a fatal injury in the victory. The ageless Nucus, in his leap to Nocturnus's neck to end the damned beast, suffered injury to Nocturnus's claw. A lethal venom had dripped into the exposed and ripped open chest of Nucus. Nucus's chest, exposing rib, 
absorbed the poison as the beast yielded to him. The blackish ooze entered his punctured heart, poisoning it. Spurting ooze and blood sprayed heaven and hell. Nucus had just moments left to live. Near death, with barely the strength to move a bloody finger, Nucus used the last bit of his magic to seal Nocturnus. The abomination was entombed within a platinum cocoon. The pearlish gold metal enveloped the blinded dragon, imprisoning him within. The platinum cocoon also drained the dragon of his necromancer magic. Nucus, with his last breath, sealed the dragon's evil in an idol, which will serve as a warning to any who would dare to try to free the dragon. By secret royal decree, the idols were hidden in a secret chamber somewhere within the palace. Exactly where was a mystery. Many speculated that the idols were moved to Mephistopheles Mountain. Before being sealed permanently, Nocturnus looked to the stars and said a prayer to Nurgle. Then he roared a curse upon the Terran king and his lands. Before a thousand years time, I shall have my vengeance on you. I will rise up, rise up, rise up. I will be the right hand of doom on the heirs of my destruction. Return I shall to see the maggot and the conqueror worm feast on your flesh. Return I shall to see the breath of the reaper torment and torture your undead rotted corpses. I will command your bodies and your souls as you lie chained in servitude to me, a servitude, an eternal hellish prison with the only escape, dissolution. No cocoon of platinum can hold this beast, for I am living hell. I am the destroyer of your world. I am Nocturnus, god of the undead. All souls who feel my powerful reach, all souls who perished from the cruelty of the lords, queens, and kings of the damned will aid in my escape. The Spear of Lost Souls, source of the ancient dark magic, was divided into three shards. Each shard was further banished into three separate locations across the outlier worlds of Terra. They were placed in locations unknown, unknowable, and unnameable. Those attempting to find and obtain them would suffer a fate worse than Nocturnus. With the fall of their master, the dark sorcerers tried to regroup with the cannibal soldiers who aided their fallen king, but it was too late. The Terran king, Exhuli, and his army had caught on to them and captured them all. The punishment was severe, for the soldiers were banished to the edge of the dark forest. It was there they remained, past Styx, the river of death, and the silk wood. Long and dangerous were the days for the dark sorcerers and cannibal soldiers, awaiting their fate, living and lurking next to the deadly waters of Styx and the Silk Wood. For it was whispered many monstrosities, serpents, sharks, no one knew, were within its opaque waters or hiding in the forest. Long and dangerous too were their nights gathering water or wood while camping in Silk Wood. Nights when these evil servants fought for survival against hidden, crawling things from the river's wake, or falling nightmares from above in the flowing drapes of silk. For with 
within that ghostly domain. Rumors abound of colossal spiders who feed on anything they can catch. All of the sorcerer's high priest were condemned to be sacrificed to the dark priest own jaguar god. The chief sorcerer was to be beheaded for his failure to win the battle for Nocturnus. Mysteriously, however, the chief sorcerer escaped and disappeared into Silk Wood. Many believe that the dark god Nurgle took pity, intervened, and spared the man. Little did they know, the descendants of the sorcerer, along with the descendants of the Asteans, will try to lure people to the exact location to free their undead king. As the memory of evil fades and apocalyptic warnings crumble under the sands of time, the dangers of the dragon's release ascend. For now, forbidden, these disciples see a chance to set foot in the lands of Mephistopheles Mountain. A chance is growing with each passing decade to release Nocturnus. Should the necromancer dragon be freed, his legions will seek the relic in order to return his dark power to him. For these students of the dark arts, Nocturnus will return as an indestructible fiery force of nature, ripping and tearing away their enemies with razor talons and teeth. Nocturnus will rekindle the breath of the Reaper and the blackest sorcery to reanimate and control vast legions of the undead. Many, many years have passed since the time of Nocturnus, the necromancer dragon, king of the undead. But some creatures vanquished by the light slither and creep their evil back into our world. Through accident, through fate, or through bedeviled intent, the darkness sometimes prevails and ascends. It is here that our story begins. Thank you for listening. Have a great night.